So it's December. I don't know about you, but I get to this month every year, skidding, screaming, careening into Christmas clubbed over the head by the most wonderful time of the year. You know, the mad sprint to the unattainable spruce-scented hipster fantasy of pie and mittens and gingerbread, roaring fireplaces and party dresses and mistletoe. Fucking mistletoe. But I'm not going to beat myself up for trying to climb the Christmas mountain, for overbooking, for smashing in the million things, for buying the million things, for eating the billion things. I am imperfect. But in this month of ridiculous excess, I seek clarity. So I've been reading about sharks lately. <laughs> not shark sharks like great whites and not metaphorical sharks like the bloviating billionaire red-headed demagogue shark who shall remain nameless. <laughs> But, but baby sharks, and specifically baby sharks in big city aquarium tanks. Now you need to know that there are only female sharks in these tanks, no male sharks. And one day the guy coming in to feed the penguins next door walks by the shark exhibit with his bucket of chum and notices a baby shark in the shark tank. Holy smokes, where'd that baby shark come from? This intrigued me, so I googled it and read also about baby lizards, baby snakes, certain insects, also the Louisiana red swamp crayfish, and even a few species of birds, notably turkeys. Just mommies, no daddies. All observed in captivity, so who the hell knows what's happening out in the wild. Parthenogenesis, scientists call it. Greek root parthenos, virgin genesis creation. Parthenogenesis, the phenomenon of virgin birth. Spontaneous reproduction occurring when a species is under profound environmental distress, such as a captive female shark in a tiny aquarium tank, say, in Detroit. <laughs> now, apart from the obvious implications regarding the necessity of father sharks, father lizards, father snakes, father turkeys, and perhaps the Y chromosome in general, <laughs> and with a nod to my Catholic upbringing, lapsed and pissed off as I am, I am wondering, and bear with me here, like maybe, I'm wondering if anyone, like maybe this new nifty pope, for instance, has ever considered the Virgin Mary in light of such science. <laughs> Since baby Jesus was born at a time when his own species was under profound distress. Mary was essentially living in a military dictatorship, not unlike a shark tank in Detroit. <laughs> And the virgin birth part was the first piece of that fairy story that sounded fishy to me, if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> now what if that bewildered girl in the police state of Galilee under Rome's brutal client King Herod, the one who ordered the slaughter of the innocents, what if poor unsuspecting Mary won our species lottery or maybe drew the short straw, was chosen? was ordained not by the Holy Spirit, but by the principles of Darwinian evolution and was not exactly visited by the angel Gabriel, though it is a lovely story. <laughs> Unless Gabe arrived all excited to tell her what God had planned for her and she said, I got this. <laughs> Women have a way of shutting that whole thing down. <laughs> Maybe Mary, the perpetual virgin, knew that she had a job to do and stepped up understood that she was charged by the universe and not God, unless maybe they are the same thing, and by herself, parthenogenically conceived or created, engendered, manifested on her own, an answer to the ugly world in which she lived, magically birthed a savior at a time when humankind needed saving. Now, we can never know the pillow talk in the honeymoon suite in Nazareth. <laughs> But for the record, Joseph must have been a mensch. <laughs> but how ingenious that virgin mother, how special that infant, how unique and powerful the young man he became to so captivate the world and the legacy of that thrall notwithstanding, for even Jesus, the Prince of Peace, got co-opted by the haters. Are we not? 2015 years later, up the creek without a paddle, again, still in catastrophic times. Global warming is a thing. Human rights are under siege all over the world. 
Frightened families are still fleeing tyrants. Innocents are still being slaughtered. December 14th was a terrible anniversary. I get nervous sometimes at well-publicized events involving lots of people in a crowded room. And did I mention the haters? I don't know if you've noticed, but Herod is back and he's running for president. <laughs> Are we not seething as a species under profound distress? The world has gone mad and there is no room in the inn. Literally seven and a half billion folks on this planet. 25 times more people peopling the earth than 2015 years ago. But doesn't that mean by exquisite scientific extrapolation, by the miracle of chance, given the facts of such population increase and the inescapable effect of catastrophic times, but especially given the well-documented ingenuity of Mary, the first celebrity teen mom. <laughs> Mary, who might as well have been a Syrian refugee because Damascus is just a hundred miles from Bethlehem. Mary, the queen of heaven herself, creating the change she required in the world, given her tremendous courage and the fact of her son. Maybe there are more saviors among us. Maybe here in this room, look around. Maybe it's you or you. You, sir, are you the anointed one? You, ma'am, were you sent to save us? And who's to say that some of us weren't conceived parthenogenically. How would you know? <laughs> Are there any pregnant people in the house? And without meaning to sound like I want to put Christ back into Christmas, and regardless of your belief, we gather here tonight in his name, Christ, also from the Greek, Christos, anointed. A baby born to a frightened woman in desperate circumstances. Some things never change. <laughs> we have so much work to do. Last year we raised a fortune to help the most frightened and desperate and unlucky among us. This is such good work. Who's to say any one of us is not a savior? But it can't just be tonight this month. Mankind is our business all year long. Are we not all anointed? And if you don't think so, ask the person you came with tonight. Ask your kid. Ask your neighbor. Ask your mom. Ask your dog. You are required to be a blessing and not just to the folks you love. So take it with you into the new year. Take the love and fellowship in this room of December of this night. Pack it up and take it home. Go, tell it on the mountain. Bring some joy to the world. Traverse a far sing in exultation with heart and soul and voice. Get out there, feel the burn, folks. <laughs> Be the dawn of redeeming grace because hate is strong and mocks our song. Wild and sweet, the words repeat the sounding joy over the hills and everywhere. Fall on your goddamn knees. Then joyful all ye nations rise. Peace on earth, good people. Goodwill to men. Ye who now will bless the poor shall yourselves find blessing. Never forget the gift you were born to give. And please, be the blessing that someone counts. Thank you.